come together and have been preparation before the Lord, before we get here, power is going to be available. And that power that's available, deliverance can happen in the house. Healing can happen in the house. Why? Because we've all prepared ahead of time to be in the presence of the Lord. I don't know about you, but when I come to church on Sunday morning, I want to be in the presence of the Lord. Oh. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, God. He's able to do anything but fail. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to our great God. Amen, amen. First, giving honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and to our wonderful and great God, and to all of the officers and family and friends of these two magnificent, wonderful, stupendous, and glorious churches. Amen. Amen. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus, who is the Christ. The text that was read earlier, I want to go back to Matthew, the 12th chapter. The 12th chapter of Matthew, and I want to lift up verses 22 through 25. Matthew chapter 12, verse 22 through 25. And from the New Living Translation, it reads, Then a demon-possessed man who was blind and couldn't speak was brought to Jesus. He healed the man so that he could both speak and see. The crowd was amazed and asked, Could it be that Jesus is the son of David, the Messiah. But when the Pharisees heard about the miracle, they said, no wonder he can cast out demons. He gets his power from Satan, the prince of demons. Jesus knew their thoughts and replied, any kingdom divided by civil war is doomed. A town or family splintered by feuding will fall apart. Amen. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. Be to God. I want to share today from the subject of gift recognition. Gift recognition. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this moment of sharing. We thank you, God, for this time that we now share in your power and in your presence. Father, we just continue to bless you and to give you glory and praise for all things. We ask now, God, that you bless this time that we share together in your word. I pray, Father, that you come now and fill me afresh. Fill me and anoint me afresh, O oh God, for your service. And I pray, Father, that you would open our eyes and help us to listen. Oh, our eyes so that we might see Jesus. Open our ears and help us to listen. And open our hearts that we might receive him. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Blessed Holy Ghost, amen. amen. Gift recognition. As we shared in our community day on yesterday and uh, began to look around and notice the events that were happening, and I'm proud to say that I saw folk operating in gifts, amen. Some people were operating in the gift of administration, amen. They were delegating and telling folk what to do, amen. But a lot of us were operating in the gift of service and the gift of helps. We jumped in and began to lend a hand where a hand was needed, amen. Some of us stepped outside of our comfort zones, amen, and were lending a hand, amen. And I only heard a few complaints about <laughs> the weather outside. <laughs> Amen. It was a little warm yesterday. Amen. But the Lord brought us through it. Amen. Amen. But it was also, I pray that you saw there was a time of encouragement. I pray that you were encouraged by what you experienced on yesterday. But not only encouraged, I pray that you were edified that it, it spoke to your spirit and it spoke to your 
understanding and let you know that when gifts go into operation, it's going to be all right. That you're going to benefit from being in service to the Lord. But most of all, I pray that you saw that God was glorified in the midst of it all. Some of us may have wondered and doubted and wondered what was going to happen or how it was going to turn out. Amen. But as you saw, folk turned the corner. And as you saw, more folk turned the corner. And as you saw, more folk turned the corner. I believe something began to well up in you and say, it's going to be all right. Amen. But it's an opportunity to experience the gifts in action. But as I recognize some of the gifting that was in action on yesterday, uh, it, it helped me to understand that even when we sometimes are operating in gifts, they may go unnoticed. Sometimes our gifts may go unrecognized and, and people see us doing things. They see us engaging, they see us acting, and, and they may not understand that what we're doing is operating in our gifting. And as you operate in your gift and people are edified, people are encouraged, and God is glorified. But when we, mu we must recognize that the opportunity to use the needed gift by the power of God. When we recognize that the needed gift is in place and is operating, but it's doing so by the power of God. Amen. The first thing that I want us to notice and see is that you got to recognize the opportunity. Recognize the opportunity. If you notice in our text, it's, uh, I believe, a familiar text to us and for those of you who are in our Sunday school, you know that it's a familiar text from a few weeks ago, uh, but it talks about this demon-possessed man. And it starts in the 22nd verse talking about the demon-possessed man who was blind and couldn't speak. But he was brought to Jesus and, and he was healed so that he could both speak and see. And as this crowd experienced what Jesus did on that day and as they began to discuss by what power he did what he did and some of them had attributed the healing the miracle to Satan but Jesus had to let them know this wasn't done by anything or anybody else except the power of God and when you understand that he read their thoughts I began to see that Jesus operated in at least two gifts, and I believe it might have been possibly three. But notice there was the opportunity. Jesus recognized that this was an opportune time to operate in the gift of healing. As he began to minister to this man, the man come to him demon-possessed. And he says that Jesus delivered him from the demon possession that he was experiencing. But not only did he deliver him from the demon possession, he said he also healed the man so that he could see and speak. Amen. He saw the opportunity to put the gift into action, the gift of healing. You see, you've got to see the opportunity because there are some people who cannot see for themselves. When we understand that some people can't see their needs sometimes. Some people can't see the opportunity for healing to take place. But when we operate in the particular gifts, especially as Jesus operates in the gift of healing, he notices that the opportunity is there for healing to come forth. How many times have we been in a situation and we didn't recognize the opportunity for the gift to go into action? How many times have we prayed for somebody or, or, or thought about praying for somebody and we didn't because we didn't recognize the opportunity for our gifts to go into action? Jesus saw the opportunity and he teaches us that we've got to be on the lookout for opportunities to operate in our gifts. It's one thing to know that you're gifted, but it's another thing to recognize when opportunities are presenting themselves so that you can function in your gifts. And that's exactly what Jesus does. He shows us that we can function in our gifts when we see the opportunity. 
So as we move through life and we go through life day by day, let's make sure that we're paying attention, that we're looking and we're engaging our eyes, we're engaging our heart, we're engaging our mind. And it's a good thing before you start your day to pray before you leave. So that as you go out through the day, you might find opportunities. But Lord, send me somewhere. Lord, let someone cross my path that I might minister to them. Lord, allow me to operate in my gifting in a way that will bless your kingdom. Lord, allow me to operate in my gifting in a way that will glorify your kingdom on today. Lord, allow your gifts to be stirred up in me as I make my way through life on today. And watch God allow you to operate in your gifting. The power of God is there, but we've got to learn to see because there's some people who can't see. And then we've got to learn to see the opportunity because there are those who can't speak for themselves. There are some people who don't know how to talk to God. And so we've got to see the opportunities because when we operate in our gifts, it's a way of communicating to God on their behalf. When I, I think about the times that I pray for folk, when I think about the times that I've, I've done things for folk, when I think about the times that I've operated in my gifting, and it allows somebody to see God, but it also allows somebody to come to the place where they can then begin to talk to the Lord. Amen. Amen. When, when I understand that there have been times when we understand that the talking to God is, is foreign to some people. Yeah. Everybody doesn't talk to the Lord the way that we do. Amen. And when we understand that if we don't talk to God sometimes on behalf of others or, or we don't operate sometimes in a way that helps others to be able to communicate with God. And as they began to talk to the Lord, it's sometimes we're the first uh, step to somebody else learning how to communicate with God. When we operate in our gifting, it opens the door for somebody to experience the opportunity to talk to the Lord. If you look at the text, it says that Jesus come upon this demon possessed man who also could not see or speak. Not only does he allow this man's eyes to be open so that he could see the glory of the Lord, but he opens up his mouth now that he can have the opportunity to talk to the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Do you remember the day that somebody helped you to be open to the point where you could communicate to God? Do you remember the day that somebody helped you be able to learn how to talk to the Lord for yourself? Do you remember the day that you finally realized that you could go into the presence of the Lord yourself? You didn't have to have somebody go for you. It's a glorious thing when we learn how to pray for ourselves. I know we get like other folk praying for us, and I know it's okay to ask other folk to pray for us, but what about when it's time for you to pray for yourself? Yeah. Have you gone to that point where you can communicate with God for yourself? Have you gone to the point where your mouth is no longer closed, where you can speak for yourself to the glorious God that we serve? You can open up your mouth and call on the name of Jesus yourself. You can open up your mouth and call on God and say, Lord, I need you in this moment. Lord, I need you to come by and see about me. Lord, I need you to fix this situation. Yeah. Lord, I need you to address the things that are going on in my life. When we open up our eyes and when we open up our mouth and begin to see the glory of God for ourselves and begin to speak to God for ourselves, it's a blessing. And we can bless somebody else by operating our gifts and helping them to come to that place. But as Jesus operates in his gifting, and if you noticed, I said earlier that it was possibly a third gift. And if that third gift, I would say, would probably be the gift of miracles. Jesus operated in the gift of miracles. A miracle happened that day. A demon-possessed man who could not see or speak. He's delivered. His sight is back. And he can speak. That man was blessed. That man felt the power of God on that day. He experienced the gifting of Jesus. Jesus is always the best example of anything. I don't care what it is, he's always the best example of anything. You want to know the best preacher in the world? Look to Jesus. You want to know the best prophet in the world? Look to Jesus. You want to know the one who can love you the best? Look to Jesus. You want to know who can be the best friend in the world? Look to Jesus. He's the best example of anything. So as we talk about operating in our gifts, we look to Jesus. 
And he shows us what it means to operate in our gift. We see the opportunities. And as we see the opportunities, we look to operate and function in our gifts. But don't miss this. Seeing the opportunity brings glory to God. When Jesus saw the opportunity and he functioned in his gift, it brought glory to the Lord. The crowd began to talk and it said the crowd was amazed and they asked, who could it be this man called Jesus? Who is this man? And notice what they said. Is he the son of David, the Messiah? In that moment, glory was being given to God. In that moment, recognition that was being given to Jesus that he had come from God. In that moment, God was being glorified because they were concerned about how Jesus was able to do what he did. I'm so glad that as they began to recognize that it was God who was behind this and that it, Jesus was the Messiah, that he was the one who had come to do the work of God and to take care of the sins and save the people of Israel. He came to do the work of God. And as he operates in his gifting, he saw the opportunity to deliver. He saw the opportunity to set the blind eyes open. He saw the opportunity to open up a mouth that was been closed. He saw the opportunity to bring God. God glory and in that moment God was glorified and in that moment people began to see that this man is different there's something about this man that we've seen in no other man and they found out that day that Jesus was one who had been sent by God so they recognized the opportunity but not only did they recognize the opportunity they recognized the need there was the need to deliver this demon-possessed man. One of the things that we can do that benefits somebody else is to see what they really need. Not to see what they want, not to see what we want them to, but to see what they really need. How many times have we looked at somebody or ministered to somebody and we really saw what they needed? God has blessed us with the opportunity to see what they really needed. Now, in this man's case, it might have been obvious, especially when it came to the demon possession, that this man needed help. He needed to be delivered from this demon that was possessing him. Well, some of the other things might not have been as obvious. You don't know he's blind until you maybe get close enough to see that there's something going on with his eyesight. You don't know that he can't speak unless you try to engage him in conversation and he then can't respond. But we see that there is a need of being delivered from this demon. There's the need for deliverance. When we understand that our gifts are intended to deliver people. Amen. Yeah. Our gifts are intended to deliver people, first of all, from sin. Yeah. Hallelujah. When we deliver people from sin by sharing the gospel, the good news. Yeah. Those of us who have the gift of teaching, the gift of evangelism, the gift of, 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 of sharing and shepherding. When we learn to have those gifts and we operate in those gifts, we can help people to be set free. Amen. When we share the gospel of Jesus Christ, somebody can be delivered. Yes. Somebody can be set free. And when they're set free, they can then learn to have a relationship yes. with the Lord. Yes. They can live and grow and be blessed and have a relationship with God because we operate in our gift to help them to get delivered. There's a need of being able to see and speak for yourself. There's a glorious need for people to be able to see God for themselves. Those who have the gift of teaching can help people to see who God really is because they're able to share from the word of God that helps give them a clearer picture and to give a clearer understanding of who God is. To give them a clearer understanding of what it means to be in relationship with God. And when we understand that these are the things that God desires for us to do as those who are in the body of Christ, we understand that God desires us to operate in our gifts. And another thing that we understand, there was the need for healing. Amen. How many people need to have their souls healed? Their lives healed? We've gone through some turmoil. We've gone through some heartache. We've gone through all kinds of things and there's healing needed in our lives. A lot of times we only think healing is healing from cancer or 
healing from some uh, malality. Mal well, don't use that big word, Jones. <laughs> We're trying to get healed from something that is seriously wrong in our body. But what about my spirit? Does my spirit need healing? What about my soul? Does my soul need healing? I would dare say that a lot of us need our souls healed because I'll be, if myself, I operated in the flesh for a long time. And then I needed my soul to be healed because my soul had been used to being under the authority of the wrong power. But one day I learned that Jesus wanted to have a relationship with me. One day I learned that there was a better way. And that better way was to allow the Lord to be the head of your life. To allow the Lord to come in and fix your soul. To allow the Lord to come in and heal you from the spiritual disease that we were facing called sin. And as he came in, he began to heal. Heal my spirit. Heal my, my soul. And a lot of us need our minds healed too. Paul said we need to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Yeah. As they old saying, we got stinking thinking. We think the wrong way. But the problem is we've been thinking that way for a long time. Yeah. And it's difficult to change the way we've been thinking. Amen. Just think for a moment. Amen. How long did it take you to come to a real conclusion of who God was? Mm. How long did it come, take you to come to the point where you began to think that I need to live according to the will and the plan of God. Some of us may not even be there yet. We're still thinking about whether or not we want to really serve the Lord. We're still thinking about whether or not we really want to give our life to God. We're still thinking about that. I'm here to tell you today, stop thinking about it and just do it. Stop trying to figure it out and let God work it out in your life. All you got to do is serve the Lord. All you got to do is follow the plan that God has given us. He's given us a glorious plan. He said, I can come into your life, and if you let me, I can change your life. I can come into your life, and if you let me, I can make things better. I can come into your life, and yeah, you may have trouble still come your way, but since I'm there with you, I'll walk with you through that trouble. But too many of us are unwilling to let go of the way we think to allow God to take over and begin to change and shape our thinking, our thought process. The healing needs to come. And we don't let the healing come because we're too busy trying to hold on to what we have. You should let that go like we let them balloons go on Friday. Because some of us are holding on to something that is no good for us. We're holding on to something that is damaging our life rather than better in our life. But we refuse to let it go and be healed. Jesus said, let it go and be healed. Let it go and I will bring healing into your life. Let it go and I will bring you the thing that you need the most because I see your need. I recognize the need that you have. And the thing is we need to see Jesus for who he is. Yeah. Notice in the text when it says that the people began to say that he is the son of David, the Messiah. They saw Jesus for who he really was. They saw him for the one that God has sent into the world. They saw him as the one who God has sent to take away the sins of humanity. They saw him as the one that God has sent that he might bless the people that were here. But if we don't see Jesus for who he really is, and when we don't have people operating in our gifts so they can tell and show people who Jesus really is, that's why you have teachers and the Preachers and the, and the shepherds and, and why you have people who have different gifts at the evangelists and apostles, all of those to share with you who Jesus really is. We've got to know who Jesus is for ourselves. We've got to really know who Jesus is in our own understanding. When we don't know who Jesus is, how can we tell somebody else who he is? How can we tell somebody else about a God that we don't know? That's why we've got to make sure that we get into our word and understand what the word is saying to us so that we know who Jesus is. Yes. And we know him for ourselves. Amen. And when we call on his name, we know that he comes running. Yes. Just like he told David. David said, Lord, come see about me. Amen. And God showed up. David was confident in that thing. Why? Because he knew the Lord. Amen. I'm confident that God will show up in my situation. Why? Because I know the Lord. Amen. I know that he says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. I'll be with you even until the end. He told me that if I cast my cares upon him and cast my burdens upon him, that I can then have those burdens lifted, that he would carry those burdens. Hallelujah. 
Yes. Why did he say that? Because he said, my yoke is easy and my yes. burdens are light. Yes. Hallelujah. When I know the Lord, I can have all of my issues dealt with because my needs will be met because I know who he really is. Yes. I know that he will never leave me. I know that he sticks closer than a brother. I know that he loves me beyond a shadow of a doubt. How do you know that, John? Because one day he went to the cross at Calvary and he died in my place. One day he went to the cross at Calvary and he gave up the ghost so that I might have a right to the tree of life. I know that he loves me. Why? Because he intercedes on my behalf and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. I know that he loves me because the word of God said that Jesus, that God is love. So when I know who he is, I know he's the lover of my soul. I, I know that he's the one who blesses me. I know he's the one who makes it all possible. And when I understand and know that, then I know who he is. I can tell somebody else who he is. But I've got to see that need as I operate in my gifting. And as I operate in my gifting, because I see the need, I recognize the need that these individuals may have. And as I recognize their need, I begin to function in the gift set that I have. Thank you, Amen. Amen. All because God wants to edify his people. He wants us to be encouraged as we carry out the work. But it all brings glory unto him. And then finally, We've got to recognize that God's available power is there. Do we recognize God's available power? Jesus operated in the third gift or the second gift, depending on how you look at it. And he said he knew their thoughts. And they began to say that he does this by the power of Satan. When Jesus moved into this moment, he recognized that there was an opportunity. He recognized the need. But he also recognized that God's available power was present. Hallelujah. Amen. When we go into some ministry situations, you'll get a, a, a sense that the power of God is great in that moment. There's sometimes when you can have a sense that God is about to do something big. You have a sense that God is about to, to show up in a mighty way. And, and it's in that moment that you recognize now his power is always available. But there's some moments when his power will really show up. The question we have to ask ourselves as we minister, as we operate in our gift, do we recognize God's available power? The only way that healing takes place is if God's power is available. The only way that the demon possession is dealt with and deliverance happens is if God's power is available. The only way that the eyes are open is if God's power is available. The only way that he can speak again is if God's power is available. The man recognized that there was power available to, for deliverance. Jesus recognized that God's power is here in this moment. I'm going to ask the Father for healing. I'm going to ask the Father for deliverance. And deliverance will come. Because God's power is available. So as we operate in our gifts with the understanding that God's power is available. I know I'm not dependent upon me. I'm not dependent upon anything else. I'm dependent only on the power of Almighty God. And when I understand I'm dependent on the power of God, and if his power is what makes it all available, it's when we understand and trust that the gifting that we have is powered by God. And if we operate in that power, we operate in that gift, and we don't get excited, and we don't get too proud and puffed up, but recognize whatever's happening through me is happening through the power of Almighty God. It's not anything that I could do. It's not because I'm so good. It's not because I have a special relationship with the Lord. I just have a relationship with God. And since I have a relationship with God, he decides to let his power work through me. And you have a relationship with God. And if you just do what he's asked you to do and operate in your gifting, his power works through you too. But we, we understand that the power is working through us because it's available. The power has to be available for deliverance to take place. That's why when we come to church on Sundays, when we gather, it's important that we prepare before we get here. 
It's important that we prepare by getting prayed up. Amen. It's important that we prepare by getting into the presence of God before we show up. Yeah. So that we've already spent time with the Lord. So that when we get here, if we all come together prepared, if we all come together and have been preparation before the Lord, before we get here, power is going to be available. Yeah. And that power that's available, deliverance can happen in the house. Healing can happen in the house. Why? Because we've all prepared ahead of time to be in the presence of the Lord. I don't know about you, but when I come to church on Sunday morning, I want to be in the presence of the Lord. I know that his presence is always with us, but I want to be in, such a, in his presence in such a way that it feels like there's a, a heaviness that weighs down on the house. There's a heaviness that, that comes in the midst of worship. There's a, a heaviness that comes in and you know there's nobody but the Lord. Maybe one day we can worship to the point where the glory of the Lord ascends and descends into this place and we can see the cloud like they did back in the Old Testament days when the glory cloud came in and settled among the people. That we might be able to experience the power of God in such a miraculous way. We still need miracles today. We still need healings today. We still need deliverance today. We still need the power of God to operate in us today. So let us come together and worship and prepare to get into the presence of the Lord that his power might fall in a wonderful way. We understand that as God's power comes and as we are set free and, and as we are delivered, it shows, Jesus shows us that the power is available. And he shows us, too, that this is the true power. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Not just any power, but the true power. Amen. See, we've been used to just experiencing some power. But I want to experience the true power. Yes. I want to experience the, the real power. Yes. The power that only comes from God. The power that is able to set free. The power that is able to deliver. The power that is op able to open blinded eyes. The power that is able to open deaf ears. I want to experience that true power. Yeah. The power that only God can bring into our life. The power that only God can make available. That's the type of power that I want to experience. Do you want to experience that power too? Amen. Well, I hope you know that every time we get ready to use our gift, the power is available. Amen. It doesn't matter if you're sweeping floors, the power is available. It doesn't matter if you're out here opening deaf ears, the power is available. It doesn't matter if you're praying for somebody on their sick bed, the power is available. It doesn't matter if you're praying for somebody that might be on their deathbed, the power is available because we're operating in our gift and we stayed in contact with God and we've been blessing the Lord and we've been a free spirit able to open and operate in the power of Almighty God. And as we do so, God will bless the body. And as he blesses the body, we are encouraged, we're edified, and God is glorified because we recognize the opportunity for our gifts to be used. We recognize that God has put a moment before us that our gifts can be put into operation. Are you looking for that moment where God has presented you with a gift opportunity? Well, he's able to show you that this is a moment for you to shine. It's a moment for you to step forward and let your gift go forward because it's going to bring me glory. It's going to edify your brothers and sisters. It's going to encourage your brothers and sisters. So I need you to step out there and begin to operate in your gift. I need you to step out there and begin to call on the name of Jesus that your gifting might get into effect. And as you begin to operate in your gift, as you use your gift for my glory, the body will be delivered. The body will be healed. The body will be set free. And as this thing's happening, people will know who I really am. And they'll begin to call on the name of Jesus. They'll look for the son of David. They'll look for the Messiah. They'll look for the Lamb of God the one that takes away the sins of the world they'll look for that savior that they can call on they'll look for my name and they'll call upon my name that they might be saved are you ready to operate in your gift are you ready to recognize the gift opportunities Hallelujah. God wants us to know and understand we've got a gift I'm going to say it like they say you've got a gift you've got to use it It's a power that God has made available. Yeah. He wants you to tap into it. There's a power that operates you and your gifting. As it tells us in the beginning, this is not something that you got to choose. But it was something that the Holy Spirit chose for you. The Holy Spirit gave you the gift that you have. He gave it to you. He said, this is what I want you to have. 
And as he told us, this is what he wanted us to have. Amen. Now it's your job to figure out what your gift is, mm -hmm. to function in it, and to rely on the power that comes with it. Amen. The Holy Spirit said, this is the gift that you will use to bless the body, Amen. to encourage, Amen. to edify, you, and to bring glory to God. This is the gift that I have specifically chosen to put in you. Amen. Don't belittle what you get. But understand, he chose to put that gift in you for a reason. He chose to put that gift in you to be a purpose in this life. Whatever it is, I encourage you to function in it. To, to celebrate it. To understand that it's there for a purpose. It's to benefit the kingdom of God. Amen. And as you operate in it, look for the opportunities. Amen. Recognize the opportunities. Recognize the need. Amen. And know that it's by the power of God that you're able to function in that role. Amen. Amen. Thank you for tuning in today. We pray this message was a blessing to you. If it was, drop us an email at wesleyonmain at yahoo.com. That's wesleyonmain at yahoo.com to let us know how this message has touched your life. Until next time, God bless.